good evening, gamers, and welcome to a spooky, 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 spooky edition of Jams and Cocktails Live. (laughs) Yeah, I am your host, Brad Brock, and it's National Paranormal Day. Tonight on the show, we're going to talk about this National Day. We're going to talk a little bit about the devices used in paranormal investigations and share just a few of the many allegedly haunted places here on Florida's Treasure Coast. Let's say hello to the JNC Destruction crew this evening here in the lounge. Give it up for Ms. Ellie Brock and the master of disaster, Mr. Derek Zugel. Very cute. Getting, Nin- getting your uh, little screenshots in. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> it's They're learning, you guys. They're learning how to uh, <laughs> how to strike a pose so that I can take the screenshots without having to... Uh, thumbnail. Yeah, and uh, yeah, a good thumbnail. Wow. Very, very, very <laughs> uh, Gen X of you. Gen X, Gen Z, Gen, Gen L, M, N, O, P. I think that's where I, where I land. I'm in a generation. That's all that matters. It's my generation. Thanks to all of you tuning in live with us tonight and to those of you catching the show later on your favorite podcast platform like uh, Spotify or iHeartRadio, wherever you're tuning in, please uh, come to our YouTube channel and uh, like, share, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, So I did a little upgrading. We're now uh, streaming out to our our Twitch page, which has not seen any attention in probably years at this point. Yeah, we're probably not what... uh what is normally on Twitch? Yeah, you'd be surprised. I was, uh, I was, I was told that this, this, they're doing a lot of this. Yeah, on Twitch. Yeah, there's a whole like podcast section of Twitch now. Believe it or not, well, we're there. If you guys are on Twitch, uh, you can catch us there as well. And uh, there's more places uh, to come with uh, some of the upgrades that I've done. <laughs> Whoa! More places to see our faces. I'm a poet. I didn't even know it. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> Wherever you're tuning in, please, uh, as I mentioned, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, like, share, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. But before we get down to business, we're going to uh, share our completely unrelated cocktail of the week. Cocktail of the week here, and I'm very excited about this. But you guys, there there is a backstory to this cheeky little cocktail. So I had this idea to serve a rum punch bucket, but instead use a miniature dumpster. And I was putting uh, something away in Jordan's car the other day, and I saw this little piece of like swag it, that she had gotten from a trade show, uh, which included this this little garbage can. And uh, and here it is, right here. I present to you the JNC. Rum dumpster. Wait, don't you dare spray that over all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a, a it's a nice rum punch. Here, I'll go back. Um, I guess there's no going back. You can never go back again. But um, it's very simple. It's uh, light rum, dark rum, pineapple, orange, lime, and a splash of grenadine. Right, Derek? Am I right? I threw in a little bit of gr- uh, cranberry in there. Too. Oh, you changed the recipe. I'm just kidding. There's no recipe. There's no um, recipe. So I'm going to make... A, I couldn't find the grenadine. I wanted something red. <laughs> oh, perfect. That works, too. I'm going to make a huge mess here real quick. You can see you can see everybody else has uh, already put their whipped cream on there, whipped cream top, because you got to have cream in a rum dumpster. Ellie likes a lot of cream. If you don't like whipped cream, you're a psychopath. True. I'm just like saying. It. It's true. So there you go. You guys, it's the it's the rum oh, dumpster. It's the rum dumpster. <laughs> it tastes like garbage. Uh, hot, wow. hot, hot garbage. Cold garbage. That's not so bad. You know what it is? I know exactly what it is that you hate, Ellie. The plastic. No, I don't think it's the plastic. <laughs> well, probably that's you. You don't like dark rum. It's exactly what, what's in there that I think you don't like. Dark rum has a very interesting taste. It's um, 
it, it's not for the faint of heart. I think she was making a, a pun there, sir, about it talking like garbage. That was Tasting a pun. Like garbage. For sure. But it also tastes like it's going to rot my gut. Well, I totally missed the pun. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, th- but I thought it was pretty good. He's just too excited about his little trash cans. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, look, you guys, it has little wheels that work. That work. You can roll this thing. Now you right understand out. the <laughs> women's obsession with tiny things. Oh, I know. Oh, God. What did I with, do? With tiny things. At least one woman's obsession with a uh, tiny thing. It's not lost on me. Lost on a lot of people. You ask any woman and they see a little miniature version of anything, almost anything, (laughs) (laughs) and they're like, oh, how cute. It's good to know. That's great information. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) join us each week for our cocktail or shot of the week by visiting (laughs) jnclive.tv. <laughs> and wow, navigating soon. to the shot of the week page yeah. and uh, see what we're playing. And then you can get all the ingredients delivered to your door by our friends at Drizzly. Drizzly. Um, just to let you know, if you guys haven't figured this out, we are a Drizzly affiliate. So uh, when you click the Drizzly links on our website uh, and complete an order, you also help support the show. So go and be a lazy sack just like the rest of us and uh, get some booze delivered to your door. And help us keep this show afloat uh, it's been a while since i've had the two of you together in the room here uh at the same time i feel like it's been a while since all of us have been together i, I, I think it has <laughs> it's been weeks um we've had uh <laughs> jordan's out uh on on a uh, on a trash mission <laughs> um yeah it, uh, ellie was out last week uh derek was out the week derek and jordan were out the week before it was just oh, me yeah. and you holding down the fort yeah, it's nice to have you guys here. How you been? How have you been, Ellie? How was your week? Everything good? Uh, it was better than I thought it would be. Um, but yeah, very busy. I'm very tired, and it's not done yet. Ah, so yes, not yes, done yet. Yes. It's a big week. May fifth is a is a yeah. big day for you and your store, isn't it? It's the biggest day of the year, and so our Taco Tuesday is normally kind of crazy. It was even more crazy this week ah, nice. and i was like telling some of the people that we were working with i was like this times it by two and that's gonna be our cinco de mayo and they were like there's no way and i was like oh yeah just wait <laughs> and, they, and they all quit everybody quit <laughs> no i mean we did have one person quit but we just hired her so it was like whatever you're not even trained yet but uh <laughs> no it's uh it's gonna be I don't want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Derek? How you been, man? Been pretty good. Um, just gearing up for Cinco de Mayo. Um, making sure we got all the liquor we need for the special drinks and all the extra things that we have to cook on Friday. Um, Are you guys like, usually busier on Cinco de Mayo? Like, is that a big day there? Um, for my location, it's about two and a half times busier than it would normally be so yeah Crazy. we're we're expecting big numbers hopefully Good. it'll save the rest of the week <laughs> i thought you're gonna say hopefully it'll save the restaurant <laughs> <laughs> you never know <laughs> yeah. all right you guys well as uh as always we are uh watching the chats and comments i might be completely useless with it tonight i have a new chat where it's kind of consolidating all the chats together uh, but there's no scroll bar, so if I oh. miss it, it's gone forever. <laughs> so I apologize. But the other yahoos here are uh, keeping an eye on it as well. So if it's something important, direct it to them. And they'll uh, hopefully interrupt me politely. I want to say welcome back, Lubeck. We yes. haven't seen you in a while. He's he's in the chats today. So. Mike Lubeck. I see him pop up there. And Philip and Paul. Thank you guys for tuning in live with us. Um, I guess we should uh, get right down to our spooky celebration. What do you think? Probably a good idea. Yeah. Sure. All right, you guys. Let's celebrate National Paranormal Day. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> oh, good. It's just, it's just a logo, guys. Just a logo. Just a logo. Thank goodness. Had me worried. Well, first off, here's a little bit about uh, Paranormal Day. Uh, those of you that don't know, uh, National Paranormal Day is an unofficial holiday observed on May 3rd each year, which celebrates all things supernatural and unexplained. The day is a chance for people to explore their interest in the paranormal and to learn more about the mysteries of the unknown. National Paranormal Day was created to encourage people to be open-minded about the supernatural and to explore the possibilities of the unknown. It's a day to celebrate the fascination with ghosts, spirits, UFOs, and other unexplained phenomena. On National Paranormal Day, people may attend events, lectures, or conferences, listen to podcasts that don't normally talk about paranormal stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but all that related to paranormal research and investigations, they may also participate in ghost hunts, um, paranormal investigations or other activities that allow them to explore the unknown. Some people may choose to celebrate National Paranormal Day by sharing their own paranormal experiences. Do either of you have any paranormal experiences? Don't tell me. I just say yes or no. Uh, sure. What about you, Derek? <laughs> Yeah, I got stories. Okay, good. That's great. Because I have, I'll have something to add when we get to story time. But here we go. Um, uh, whether through social media, blogs, or other platforms, podcasts, uh, radio shows, internet television, others may watch paranormal documentaries, read books on the subject, or visit haunted locations to immerse themselves in the world of the supernatural. Overall, National Paranormal Day is a fun and lighthearted way for people to celebrate their interest in the paranormal and to connect with others who share their fascination with the unknown. No, no, no. Right? Ooh. Ooh. Um, so I will start by saying, and I've said this before, I have not had a real vivid paranormal experience uh myself the, the only story that i can have that i've completely debunked so it's really not even worth re repeating but as soon as we moved into this house um we have the little color changing thing on the back of the tv the little strip and i like it to be purple don't judge me it's the color that i like for behind the television <laughs> it matches the roku color anyway oh, so you know um so i would put it to purple and I'd walk out of the room or whatever the case is. And I come back and it would be yellow. And this happened for days on end in this house when we first moved in. And I was like, and then I just, I, I had a moment. I was like, am I having my first paranormal experience? So very, very calmly in my, in my house by myself, I was having a little conversation with this ghost. I said, listen, ghost, it's cool that you're here. I know we just moved in. Happy to share the space. If you want that to remain yellow, I will keep it yellow, even though I don't like it. And it never turned yellow again. Well, what did you find out it was? How did you debunk really? this? So the RF signals from various remote controls operate different things around a home i realized that the volume on the sound bar for our television also changed the color of the backlight on the television <laughs> <laughs> that's great and so when i would generally if i was watching tv or whatever i would and i was leaving the room i would turn turn down the volume that's just what i do but i don't look at the television while i'm doing it i give it three clicks and i walk out well the down button on the on the volume remote changed the the, the backlight to yellow <laughs> wow <laughs> debunk debunk <laughs> how, how did you uh actually debunk that did you actually look at the tv at one point yeah yeah it's, it's basically what happened i i was uh turning it down uh, because jordan had probably kept it up at some obnoxious level of you um and uh i was just turning it down and um i saw it change the color idiot <laughs> anyway 
So that's my ghost story. <laughs> what what about you, Ellie? Uh, what what is your paranormal ghost story? I've never had like anything very specific happen either. Um but I've had like I don't know, like telepathic things happen before. Okay. That's still paranormal to me. Yeah. There was one that like stands out to me and it was like, it was when I was living with Steve and Jen and Colby was little and I was like super hungover (laughs) and I was like half asleep, half awake. And I remember like laying there and just thinking in my head, I'm like, Colby's like up to some shit and I'm in my room. Like, I don't know what's happening. And then I feel pain and then I hear Colby like cry in my head and then he starts crying in the house. And that was like super weird to me. Oh, weird. Yeah. So it's like you you predicted him hurting himself. Yeah. Or she thought it into being. Maybe I manifested manifested it. (laughs) Yeah. That's terrifying and terrible. You're a terrible person. (laughs) Oh, wild. What about you, Derek? So I used to work at a job doing overnight maintenance and I would get locked in a building by myself for hours and uh, my job was to clean things so I would clean from the front to the back everything but there were times when I would get done with the back and go back up front and, and check on things and material that I knew had been on shelves were like five, six feet away from the shelf laying on the ground or there were broken things that were feet away from where they were when I cleaned. And so I, I actually went through and I watched a couple of the videos and you could see things flying off the shelves at times. Did you did you hear anything at the time? I would never hear anything. I had I had headphones in because oh yeah sure that makes sense. But things would come off the shelves and you off, saw it on video. I saw it on video. There oh was nothing man. there. I was the only one Goose in the bumps. building at the time. There were times when at the same job, um, I'd be I'd walk around a corner and I see the cooler door is on its way closing. I'm like, who just opened the door? I'm the only one in the building, legit the only person that's supposed to be in this building. You thought you were the only one in the building. <laughs> I was the only physical one in the building. But um, yeah, the I debunked the, the cooler door, but I never to this day, and this goes back 15, 16 years, I've never been able to figure out because it didn't happen at just one location. It would happen at multiple stores that I worked at in my career doing this sounds like you got a little attachment that's a term for the paranormal investigators out there sounds like an attachment derek i don't know if it was attached to me or if it was just attached to the restaurant because it was always at the same restaurant ah just different locations of that restaurant somebody really hated that restaurant (laughs) or loved it and just wanted to make sure he left his mark (laughs) that could be too oh man well spooky stuff if you want to leave your spooky stories in um in the chats and comments happy to uh look at them and read them mike lubeck left one uh said he got a divorce and his record albums mysteriously disappeared uh i feel like we could probably debunk that one mike (laughs) sorry about that uh bill black captain bill black we're actually just at a bill black event uh, over the weekend the treasure hunters uh, cook off or cook out. I always say cook off, and he's like, "It's not a cook off. I'm the only one cooking." <laughs> Bill's uh, treasure hunters cook out. It was wonderful. Uh, wonderful afternoon. You want to get into the supernatural and the paranormal, uh, ghosts, pirates. That's a, that's another thing. A lot of that. Uh, he says all the psychics already knew about this. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> yeah, about all the everything that we're talking about. <laughs> Possibly. All right, you guys. So you may be familiar, uh, of course, with uh, paranormal television shows like Ghost Hunters. Everybody's seen that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Or Ghost Adventures with my dude, Zach Baggins, my best friend. 
My best friend in the whole world, Zach Baggins. No relation to Frodo. No, no, no. No relation. So during <laughs> during the shows, they have all these very cool devices, right? They have all these very cool devices that uh, that they use to look for ghosts, right? Um, so we're going to go through and talk ab- about a few of them. Uh, first off, the EMF meter. So this is an EMF meter. It looks super space age. I don't know if they all look this way, but uh, their uh, EMF stands for electromagnetic field. Uh, EMF meters are used to measure electromagnetic energy in a given area. Paranormal investigators believe that spikes in EMF readings can indicate the presence of ghosts or other paranormal activity. That thing is scary just to look at, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't think they all look like that. Uh, no, <laughs> certainly not. They definitely made this one look space age on uh, on purpose. Uh, next up uh, are EVP recorders. Those are creepy. And now, so the, the recorder is creepy? That creeps you out? This little thing? It's basically just a, an office memo before cell phones were uh, capable of uh, yeah. keeping uh, keeping notes uh, this this device just records your voice but they've been known to capture capture the sounds of the spirits um and I actually have a couple examples of EVPs are we ready what does EVP stand for uh EVP stands for electronic voice phenomena and uh, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about it. The recorders are used to uh, capture audio recordings of voices that are not audible to the human ear at the time of the recording. Paranormal investigators believe that these voices uh, may be from ghosts or spirits. Is there any family members here? Is there I'm next to Bobby. I'm next to Bobby. I'm next to Bobby. Yep. That's what it just said. Really? Yeah. yeah. All right. Listen again. Listen nice and close. I'll turn it up for us here. I'm next to Bobby. Next to Bobby. I'm next to Bobby. Yeah. That's what it just said. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'll play it one more time. Listen right after she asks the question. Can you hear it? I'm next to Bobby. Oh, you hear say I'm next to Bobby? Yeah. That's what it just Ooh, said. Spooky really? stuff, yeah. man. That's spooky stuff. <laughs> I have another example. That one was a little hard to hear. That, uh, it was pretty freaking clear. It was pretty to me. clear, right? <clears throat> so this one. Um, uh, this is another one and it, and it's a, it's a little bit clearer. Let me know if you could tell what it says. Can anyone cover my Duffy shift tonight? No. You're so dumb. <laughs> You're <a> jerk. <laughs> Everyone catch that? Can you, can you decipher what they're saying? Can anyone cover my Duffy shift tonight? No sounds, way, bro. Yes, you got it. It sounds like the uh, disgruntled uh, voice of a past employee <laughs> or a lazy one at that. So there you go. Wow. I worked really hard on that today. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <gosh>. Next up in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no way, way. bro. Uh, next up here, we have. Um, I was. I really was expecting something. <laughs> I know. We got bamboozled. <laughs> you got bamboozled. Um, so, um, I am not sure what the difference. This is a thermal camera. Uh, thermal cameras can detect temperature changes in a given area, which paranormal investigators believe may be associated with the presence of ghosts or other paranormal entities. Uh, they also have infrared cameras uh, that can capture images in low light or dark environments allowing investigators to see potential paranormal activity and may not be visible to the naked eye. I feel like a lot of these tools like combine those two somehow uh, because I found a lot of that was like thermal and infrared. I don't know what the difference is. I'm an idiot. (laughs) Uh, Aaron, our friend Aaron, chimed in. I guess he says he's got a story from the St. Augustine Lighthouse. Let's have him. Maybe he texted me. If he did text me, I'll check it. Um, after this segment here. 
Uh, there's also motion sensors. Motion sensors that paranormal investigators use. And these are kind of fun. So they toss these babies out there. And uh, <laughs> they look like little cat toys. Um, but they light up when uh, when spirits uh, apparently move around them. So you can tell when there's a ghost nearby. And then there's also spirit boxes, which is my favorite on Ghost Adventures. Um, and this just basically cycles through a bunch of radio signals or frequencies and the ghosts are able to somehow talk through it and you can tell that it's not you know one of the voices on the radio because it's consistent over all of the all of the channels as it sweeps through i don't have an example of that uh, but uh but it's very cool ghost adventures check it out uh very cool show so that's just some of the devices uh, that paranormal investigators use to look for ghosts, which I think is pretty cool. And so uh, I'm going to check my phone here. Have you ever <laughs> gone on one of those? Uh, for Aaron's story. Paranormal uh, ghost trips, like in downtown Stewart or anything? Uh, I haven't. I haven't. And I have you, Derek? I've participated in part of one. I haven't gone on a full one, but hearing the stories and and yeah it's pretty freaky sometimes yikes especially when you work at one of the buildings that they're going to oh yeah oh that's spooky yeah for sure <laughs> um which is uh which was the duffies there which was the duff duff oh god yeah i imagine so i think it used to be like a bank or a post office or something both back in the day Yep, a lot of killing doing in, in the post office. And the bank. And the bank. Uh, so uh, this was just sent in by our friend Aaron. And, um, oh boy, I guess I could have blown that up a little bit. Uh, he said this was taken from the St. Augustine Lighthouse. And do you see Do you see a ghost up there? Do you see a ghost in that photo? I see, I see somebody's head right there on the side. But, oh, look, yeah, you can kind of see it. Down in the in the right hand corner of that window, you see a little head popping out. And apparently, there was not anybody in there at the time. Spooky. All right. Whoa. Isn't the Saint Augustine Lighthouse like notoriously haunted, though? Yes. Okay. Saint Augustine, as a whole, yeah, that's in general, true. the whole city totally haunted. Yeah. A lot of bad stuff happened there. All right. Well, we're going to dive into just a few of the many, many stories of local Treasure Coast haunts, and uh, we're going to start off uh, on our on our list here in, in Stewart. We're going to go down to Stewart. Uh, this is a place I've not visited, but now having uh, heard the story, I might have to uh, to go and check out. Enjoy our very first haunted place here on the Treasure Coast. As we begin our paranormal tour of the Treasure Coast in Stewart, Florida, we come upon a mysterious and haunting building that has stood the test of time, the House of Refuge Museum at Gilbert's Bar. Originally built in 1875 as a place for refuge for shipwrecked sailors, this historic building served as a beacon of hope and safety for those lost at sea. But as the years went by, the building fell into disrepair and became abandoned walls echoing with the ghostly whispers of a forgotten past. In 1954, the House of Refuge was saved from destruction and transformed into a museum dedicated to preserving the history of the brave men and women who once sought shelter within its walls. But despite its current use, some believe that the ghosts of the building's past still linger here. Visitors and staff have reported hearing strange noises and seeing unexplainable movements in the shadows. Some have even claimed to have seen the ghostly apparition of a young girl wandering the halls of the House of Refuge. But the most chilling tale associated with this haunted building is that of a former lighthouse keeper who died tragically within its walls. Some say that his ghost still lingers here searching for peace and resolution. But is this building truly haunted, or is it just in our minds? Only, only time can tell, right? <laughs> uh, there you, you have it there. The Gilbert's House of Refuge uh, Museum there. 
spooky stuff. Do you see that spooky ghost at the end? <laughs> it was clear as day. Yeah. No high in that ghost. Yeah. Any have either of you ever gone to the um to that museum in Stewart? Mm-mm. No. I feel like we should. I feel like yeah. we should pull this together for a Halloween thing. Halloween's coming. It's like what? Around the corner. Yeah, like a, a month away. <laughs> Pretty close. Right. Uh <clears throat> less yeah. than half a year. So um that's crazy. They also say that there's a little girl that runs around there that you can hear her like laughing and giggling and shit. And that is just Ch- children. Ghosts are way scarier than grown up ghosts, right? <laughs> bro. Little yeah. like kids. Laughter is the most terrifying thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, my God. Ever. Even in the movies, when when you have a child ghost, they are the worst. So scary, man. So scary. It's not the last on this list. It's not the last. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Uh, are you guys ready for the next story? I'm pretty ready. I, I'm i interested to find out which one is next. All right. Well, Derek, on our next Treasure Coast Honda, this one hits a little close to home for you and I. Is the devil tree? No. No. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. This one hits even closer. Enjoy the story. <laughs> Next in our look into the paranormal history of the Treasure Coast, we find ourselves in Fort Pierce, Florida, where we discover a mysterious and haunting building that has stood the test of time. The McAlpin Fine Arts Center at Indian River State College. Originally built in 1925 as the first United Methodist Church of Fort Pierce, this historic building served as a religious and social center for the community for many years. But as the years went by, the building fell into disrepair and became abandoned, its walls echoing with the ghostly whispers of a forgotten past. In the 1980s, the then Indian River Community College purchased the building and transformed it into a state-of-the-art performing arts center, renaming it the McAlpin Fine Arts Center. Despite the extensive renovations and upgrades, some believe that the ghosts of the building's past still linger there. Visitors and staff have reported hearing strange noises and seeing unexplainable movements in the shadows. Some have even claimed to have seen the ghostly apparition of a woman dressed in period clothing wandering the halls of the McAlpin Fine Arts Center. But the most chilling tale associated with this haunted building is that of a young girl who tragically died at the building's basement many years ago. Some say that her ghost still lingers there, searching for peace and resolution. Inside the McAlpin Fine Arts Center, we can feel the weight of its history and the presence of something unexplainable. Is this building truly haunted by ghosts of its past, or are these merely stories and legends? It's a g- g- ghost. <laughs> yeah, Derek. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not Derek. I don't know if you remember. So when. In the video, when it showed the seats and you could see those windows up top. Yeah, yeah. That's what we called the library. That was the music library. Oh, yeah. And we had, as part of scholarship stuff, we had to go up there and and clean and do things like that. I hated it up there, especially when they made me go alone. But during performances, when it's pitch black, except for lights from the rafters and, and spotlights and stuff, I remember seeing like flickering lights up in there those windows and it used to freak me out i asked dr reith about it a couple of times um i asked other people after shows to be like hey, who was up there and we would go up there and look get in other trouble while we were there but there was <laughs> never anybody up there spooky, spooky 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 and only a few people had the keys crazy right yeah it was weird yeah, and the calpin it's uh this is a spooky place we, we spent plenty of times in there like after after rehearsals or whatever the mm-hmm. case or sneaking in there to drink and booze or whatever well. you know um it, it, it was you know you hear stuff like clinking around and i never saw a woman in period clothing but um or a little girl but uh, like I said, I don't I don't have paranormal experiences. We'll get to that again 
coming up in, in in more stories. What do you think, Ellie? Have you ever been to the McAlpin Center? I've been as like a guest to watch the shows. Didn't you ever do like honor choir there too? I don't think we ever did no, it there. Honor band. Hmm. I spent a lot of time in that theater. Yeah, Lord. we both did. Lord. I played a bad guy on that stage. Anyway, another story for another time. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, we have another theater on the list, another theater in Fort Pierce. Um, this place is a Fort Pierce staple, and a lot of people go there. So now you might have something else to look forward to at the Sunrise Theater. Check out the story. As we continue our paranormal tour in Fort Pierce, Florida, we come upon a grand and majestic building that has stood for almost a century, the Sunrise Theater. Built in 1923 as a silent movie theater, the Sunrise Theater quickly became a popular social center for the community. Over the years, the theater underwent numerous renovations and upgrades, eventually becoming the beautiful performing arts center we see today. But with a building as old as the Sunrise Theater, it's no surprise that rumors of paranormal activity have circulated for years. Some claim that the ghost of a former stagehand who tragically died during production still lingers within the walls of the theater. Others have reported seeing the ghostly apparition of a woman in a long flowing dress walking the halls of the theater. Some speculate that she may be a former actress who once graced the stage of the Sunrise Theater. Within the Sunrise Theater, we can feel the energy of its rich history and the weight of its ghostly tales. Does this theater house a cast of wayward spirits or is it all just an act? Ooh, scary. <gasps> There's the ghost. No, oh, no, it's just me. Hey, same same color. Um, Sunrise Theater. Have either of you guys been to the Sunrise Theater? I have. Yeah, I have not. No. Um, I am not. I'm unsure. Uh, to look at the pic- pic- picture, it looks familiar. I don't know if I've, I had done something there in school or... or you if and I did a performance there. That makes sense. For, but I don't think I've gone there on my own accord for any reason. We got paid in college to go there and sing. College was a weird place. A <laughs> weird time. Much of it, <laughs> I, don't, so. I don't remember much of it, or high school for that matter. Uh, I remember the friends. I had good friends. But yeah, that place is crazy old. Yeah, it is. And uh, and yeah, a silent movie house. Pretty, uh, that, that, that first photo, what a gorgeous place. Oh, guess uh, I need to go in there and look for some ghosts and uh, take in a show. I saw uh, the Nutcracker Suite there. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. It was pretty good. I didn't see any ghosts that I know of. But you weren't looking. You weren't looking. You know. I don't think it makes a difference. Allie, you look perplexed. You look pensive. I'm just tired. Oh. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> good. I'm glad you're here. Um, and you guys, uh, this wouldn't be a Treasure Coast haunt list. Uh, if we did not talk about this final place, and I believe that jo- uh, uh, Jordan, Derek, and I will have um, quite a discussion on this one. <laughs> we have a very uh, similar story, <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, if you're from Port St. Lucie, you you already know it's coming. <laughs> this is our final haunted story here on the Treasure Coast. This is a doozy. On our final paranormal stop. We venture into the heart of Port St. Lucie, Florida, where we come upon a dark and foreboding place. A place that has earned a reputation as one of the most haunted locations on the Treasure Coast, the Devil Tree at Oak Hammock Park. Legend has it that this tree was once used as a place of execution for criminals, and it's said to be cursed by dark and malevolent forces. Some claim that the tree itself is a gateway to the underworld, that the spirits of the damned still linger here to this day. But one of the most chilling tales associated with the Devil Tree is that of the murder of two teenage girls in the 1970s. It's said that the girls were lured to the tree by a group of young men who then brutally murdered them and left their bodies to rot beneath the cursed branches. Over the years, many visitors to the site have reported experiencing strange and terrifying phenomena. 
Some have reported hearing ghostly whispers and screams, while others claim to have seen apparitions of the murdered girls and their killers. But the most notorious legend associated with the Devil Tree is that anyone who harms the tree or shows disrespect to the spirits that dwell there will be cursed with bad luck and misfortune. Some say that those who dare to cut down or damage the tree will be haunted by the vengeful spirits of the murdered girls for the rest of their lives. At the Devil Tree, we can feel the weight of its dark history and ominous presence. Is this tree truly cursed, or are these merely stories and legends passed down through the ages? We may never know for sure, but one thing is certain, the Devil Tree will continue to hold a place in the folklore and legend of the Treasure Coast for generations to come. There you have it. Yo, the that Devil ghost tree. is getting around. I know, he's the spookiest ghost in town. Um, yeah, okay, so Devil Tree. Uh, am I right to say everyone's got a Devil Tree story? Everyone's got a devil tree story. I mean, I've been there. I feel like if you grow, if you've grown up in Port St. Lucie, yeah, you've been there. You got a devil tree story. It's like a rite of passage. But have you been there at night or during the day? Oh, you have to go at night. You got to sneak in. Oh, yeah. You got to. You got to. You got to sneak in. You got to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll go. We'll go with Ellie's experience first. I never like experienced anything weird there. I just went and like it was the woods and it was nighttime so it was creepy but nothing weird happened mm -hmm. it's a weird looking tree though it's a weird looking tree yeah there's something wrong with that tree it's it's definitely sticks out like it's not normal to be where it's at ma look at this tree <laughs> you know what i'm talking about um okay so derek let's talk about your devil tree experience uh I've got multiple, but the one that, that probably stands out to me the most, um, the at the Devil Tree, they used to use it for rituals. People would go there and, and have rituals. And, and my first experience with it when I was very young teens, um, I went there on a Halloween, and there was a group of people with a lamb, I don't know what happened, and I didn't know what happened until the next day, and there was reports of people that were arrested for slaughtering a lamb at the Devil oh, Tree. I remember reading that. <clears throat> yeah. And, glad, I'm glad you yeah. hightailed it out of there. Oh, yeah. As yeah. soon as we saw people there, we left. We were like, yeah, we're not getting involved. We like, Halloween is the worst do. time to go there. Well, or was, the best. I don't know, because there's a lot of traffic, you know? I was with the same person that... Uh, Tried to freak the, freak me out by cutting the engine on their car when Becker Road was still a dirt road, and uh, yeah, played pranks on us out there too. So <laughs> it ah. was <laughs> it was his thing to mess with us and try to get us in sticky situations. Yeah, well, if you got a, if we got got around that lamb, it'd have been a sticky situation. Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah. It could have been great lamb chops. <laughs> Not, not the day after. No. no. You can't let it sit out overnight. No, that's true. Yeah. Um, I, I went one time, and uh, there's a lot of details to the story, so I'm going to try to like dance around them a little bit. Yeah, I, le I left you with that. It was a, um, it was, uh, a Halloween. We were all just kind of sitting around at my friend Nikki's apartment, and uh, it was me, uh, my friend Nikki, her friend Casey, and Nikki's uh, husband at the time and my ex-girlfriend, Leah, uh, who we all know here. Um, and we were all just kind of like putzing around thinking about what to do. And somebody said, why don't we go to the devil tree? And I was like, cool, that sounds great. Always the, the devil great tree. Advice. I didn't realize that you had to basically trespass on a state park or, or city park or whatever. Not a fence uh, to go into this place. And, of course, Halloween night, the place is just swarmed with people. Oh, yeah. There's people everywhere, you know. And uh, this this one weirdo came out of the woods and was like, do you need a tour guide to the tree? <laughs> and we were like, of course we do. So we Random let this. Random stranger in the woods. <laughs> yeah, so we let this psychopath lead us to the tree. He didn't even exist. <laughs> and uh, so we get there. I feel nothing. I have no uh, perception of the paranormal um, I believe in it. I truly do. 
Um, but I, I've never had, had an experience. And so I'm getting nothing. I'm just at this point annoyed uh, at all the weirdos there. Uh, they were not the weirdos in my group. Um, and then uh, Leah was just kind of like getting like really weird and uh, into the spirit of things. And I don't know if she was fucking around or if uh, she was really becoming uh, overwhelmed by the experience. But uh, at one point I was like, once this guy was like starting to like talk about weird stuff, I was like, we're out. We're, we're out. I kept a very close eye on the path out <laughs> and uh, we got out of there. Best part of the whole story. We get out without a problem. No worries. Nobody died. Didn't see anything uh, being executed. Um, go out there, jump the fence, only to be greeted by a, a two of Port St. Lucie's finest. <laughs> At the time, I was on probation for oh, uh, shit. for having a fake ID, getting busted with a fake ID. So uh, he pulled me aside and he was like, what the hell are you doing? I was like, I don't know, man. I was like, my girlfriend pulled me out here. I was like, I, I didn't want to do it. I didn't realize we're going into a park. I was like, but I'm also not a bitch. And he was like, all right. He's like, well, he's like, you guys get the hell out of here. And uh, and that was the scariest part of your that night. That was the scariest part of my night because I could have gone to jail. Yeah. Could have took me away. But um, yeah, the devil tree. Uh, some people have uh, really, really weird experiences there, and, and, and I've heard that some people just, it's just another have tree. Have you only gone at night, or have you been during the day I've, to see it? I've never gone during the day to see it. I have. Yeah, It's actually a really nice it's, park. It's a beautiful park. Yeah. Oak Hammock is a great park. Yeah. Of course. Now, when I first went there, Oak Hammock was not a park. When I first went there, it was there wasn't a park associated with it. Oh, so it was just it was just woods. a tree in the woods. That to me seems even scarier. That yeah, yeah, it was weird. Hmm. Well, any of you Port St. Lucie people out there that might be uh, tuning in, I would love, love, love to hear your crazy <laughs> devil's tree stories. Um, so if you want to um, send that in the chats and comments, or if you know me personally and you want to send it to my email or um, or my face Facebook or my cell phone uh, i would love to read your devil tree story but we're going to take a quick break um but before we do uh happy paranormal day that's pretty awesome and uh when we come back we're going to uh play a little name that tune round no! <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> I, I feel like this is going to be a breeze for you guys though it's going to be an easy one i don't know the pe- i don't know the singers it's a spooky round so you'll get it. And uh, we'll get into this week's entertainment news in the Geordie Files. Stick around. This is Jams and Cocktails Live. We'll be right back. Blackwater had he lived back in the swamp where the strange green reptiles crawl Where the snakes hang thick from the cypress sticks like sausage on a smokehouse wall Where the swamp comes alive with a thousand eyes, all of them is watching you You better stay off the track, some old handy shack in the back of the black bay Shack lies little sleep of Okeechobee town Talks to the small bridge Hattie I like him when the sun goes down Rumors of what she done The rumors of what she do Cat boats off the tracks Moe Hattie Shack in the back of the black bay The rain stayed on and the swamp water overflowed 
Well, the skeet is in the fever, grab the town like a fish. Doc Jackson was the first to go. Some say the plague was brought by Hattie. There was talks of hanging too. But the chalk got shackled from the house and the cackles from the bowels of the black bayou. From the bowels of the black bayou. Shadows filled the sky. Unseen collar came in. Old Kachubi had all old bad on dry. Sent her uptown to find a big black round, that full of gurgling brew. All the whispering sounds as the folks gathered round said it came from the back by you. Just from the back by you. <laughs> but you can't have no pride if you're trapped inside a slowly sinking ship. They scooped up the liquid all deep and green The whole town took a sip The very next day the fever went away The skies went from black to blue But let's fetch old Hattie for saving our town going Get him from the black bayou Get him from the black bayou Gonna get him from the black bayou Well, a party of ten of the town's best men headed for Hattie Shack. Said Swamp Witch magic is useful and good, and we're gonna bring Hattie back. Well, they never found Hattie, and they never found the shack, and they never took a trip back in. Just tacked to a stump was a parchment note that said, Don't come lurking again. Don't come lurking again. Don't come lurking back again. Oh, yeah. That was our good friend Johnny Depp Prestige and his rendition of Swamp Witch. A little paranormal song. Would you, Emily, would you, concert, would you consider witches paranormal? Yeah. Good. I mean, they're supernatural. Yeah, good. It's supernatural. I mean, I feel like it's all in the, in the same kind of realm, yeah. right? Well, yeah. we're still, we're there. We're there. And we're here, and we're back, and it's time for a spine-tingling round of Name That Tune. All right. We have our willing <laughs> contestants. <laughs> we're, held, we're held against our will. Don't here tonight, that. I feel like I need to... Uh, I need to flip flop the screens here because now I'm looking this way on the screen. I'm not looking. I'm looking completely away from you guys. It just looks weird, right? Just turn the other way. Yeah. <laughs> and then I can't see anything I'm doing. <laughs> all right, you guys. We invite all of our live viewers to play along with us in the chats and comments. Uh, we're, of course, looking for the name of the song and the band or artist that's performing it. This week's category is, you might have guessed, Paranormal Rocktivity. Yay! Wow. Wow. It took, it took a lot to come up with, you guys. <laughs> Ellie's Ghost. <laughs> no way, bro. God. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. First clue. Are you? <laughs> it does look like Pac Man. You're the. Oh, you guys are funny. <laughs> She's drawing her own Pac-Man now. <sighs> this is not what these are supposed to be used for. <laughs> you guys hear the dogs barking outside? That's kind of spooky. And there were no dogs. <gasps> <laughs> All right, here we go. First clue coming at you here for Name That Tune. 13 months old, baby. Here's that clue one more time. All right. What do you guys have? It is superstition. You both got that right. But who is the artist? Phoebe. 
Stevie Hume. Wonder. Oh my God, it took you guys long enough. Wonder. 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 Yes, Superstition by Stevie Wonder there. Here's the next clue. Are you guys ready? I'm only doing the name of the songs. You're so rebellious these days, I am. Derek. I am. Pleased to meet you. Hope you guess my name. I got this one. Here it is one more time. Pleased to meet you. Hope you guess my name. Ellie looks stumped. I have no idea the name of the song. Get half credit by putting the artist down. I don't know if I know oh, that either. Yeah. <laughs> but really? you know the song you've heard I it before? I know the song, oh, yeah. Okay. It's just one of those songs that you've heard a thousand times and you have no idea the name or who it is. Well, and it's not actually in the name of the song. Or the name of the song isn't in the, the it's lyrics. True. I mean, if you look hard enough, you find some of it in there at the very beginning rapid dog got it there over on youtube what do you guys have it is sympathy for the devil by the rolling stones ellie did you have nothing i am not yes well done well done okay are you guys ready for the next clue ready as i can be good good to hear all right, here we are. Turn your back on the baby. Don't turn your back on the baby. Here's that clue one more time. Turn your back on the baby. Don't turn your back on the baby. Ah, oh, Ellie's writing. Could be good. Could be the comeback kid here and name that tune. She's much better at this game than I am, so I'm okay with that. No one at all knows how I am at this game. <laughs> oh, you're too freaking good at this. That's why you don't play. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'd have to. I'd have to come with. Come out with like church songs. Yeah, that would probably throw me off. Rapid dog, killing it. You're killing it tonight. You got it there. Uh, it is Black Magic Woman by Santana. Well done, Ellie. Yes. Got a black magic woman. I'm pretty sure this song was on Guitar Got Hero, <laughs> which is why I know it. It's possible. All right. <laughs> Next clue in paranormal rock activity. <laughs> yep, no vocals. Here we go again. song such a jam it is all right you guys have it here let's see what you got yes <laughs> enter sandman by metallica So good. I want to listen to the whole thing. Can't do it. Get blocked. Mm -hmm. All right. And finally, final clue here on Paranormal Rock Activity. Name that tune. Here we go. Here's that clue once again. I didn't realize that this would be my genre. Mm -hmm. I told you this is going to be an easy one. Shut up. No, this I'm just knowing this stuff. <laughs> what do you guys got? Nothing. <laughs> Ellie's got nothing, which is wrong. But Derek nailed it there with Highway to Hell, ACDC. I'm on a you have to take the highway in order to get to the stairway to heaven. Ellie, it's so easy. It's the easiest one. She's tired, Brad. Leave her alone. I All I could think of was the song that you always hear at like a fair <laughs> on all the rides. They always play it. Oh, um, <laughs> by ACDC. 
of 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 um. They play this song. They play a lot I of songs do, by yeah. ACDC yeah. at the fair. They rock, man. <laughs> Rapid Dog had a clean sweep. You got every song right. Well done, <laughs> Rapid Dog. I get every song. I just didn't get the. I didn't write all the. He got. He got all of it. Good job. Great job googling things, Rapid Dog. Oh, <laughs> that's not nice. I'm joking. He didn't do that. Rapid Dog would never do that. All right, you guys. It's time to take a. Uh, Peek at this week's entertainment headlines and everybody's favorite news segment named after someone who isn't here right now, uh, presented by somebody who writes the stories anyway. This is <laughs> the Jordy Files. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Welcome, welcome to the Jordy Files. I am Brad Brock with you tonight while JT is living the good life in the Big Easy in New Orleans, eating beignets and drinking Sazerac. Two things which I'm sure she's probably not doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tonight in the Jordy Files, we're going to talk about uh, who is covering for Katie and Lionel on American Idol while they're at the Royal Coronation. How much one gingery musician is paying for their New York City apartment. Also, Post Malone responds to his fans' concerns about his weight loss. And one of the world's biggest bands calls it quits. Also, we say farewell to the father of daytime trash TV and a Canadian musical treasure. But first, let's start out with today's celebrity birthdays, shall we? Uh, This person would be celebrating a birthday. He passed away back in 2006. James Brown. He passed away at 73. The funky soul singer who gained fame for his anthem, I Got You, I Feel Good. And uh, Rolling Stone magazine actually ranked him seventh on their list of 100 greatest artists of all time. Number seven? Number seven. Oh. All right. Uh, He sadly passed away on Christmas Day back in 2006. Uh Next up on our list, turning 45 years old today, country singer, songwriter, and guitarist Eric Church. He won the Academy of Country Music Award for Top New Vocalist in 2011, and he's released a string of top hits like Drink in My Hand and Springsteen. Interesting stuff. Uh, Frankie Valli. Frankie Valli. Frankie Valli. I know. Isn't it incredible? Frankie Valli, friends, is uh, 88 years old today. Whoa. 88. Front man, of course, of the Four Seasons, whose hits included Big Girls Don't Cry and Sherry. Sherry, baby. Right? I get that right, Derek? You did. Hit the, all the notes, too. I know. It's just because I'm amazing. I mean, really. This is what all this, uh, all this comes down to. It's a great and song. Modest. <laughs> and, uh, and modest. I love that song from Dirty Dancing. Turning 36 year old today, Korean French actress, uh, Palm Clementif. Uh, she was uh, cast into the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the role of Mantis. Oh, and how old is she? 36. Young, wow. young little sprout. Yeah, uh, she is. She made her debut in the Marvel Universe as Mantis in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and would reprise her role for Avengers Infinity War and will most likely be in the uh, the new one coming out yeah. that Derek's going to see. I, I will go see that on Friday when it comes out. She was I know she was in the Christmas one that they did. Weird. Christmas Trying to be special. Too much like Star Wars. Turning 47 years old today, best known for playing Joan Harris on the AMC series Mad Men, Christina Hendricks. I love her. Yeah, she's also yeah, she's appeared fantastic. in such films as Drive, Detachment, and Life as We Know It. And rounding out our birthdays here, turning 47 years old, actor known for his role in The West Wing and Psych, Dual Hill. Uh, he also made appearances in movies like Holes and She's All That. And uh, he actually returned to TV on CBS's Doubt. So, happy birthday. He is a very underrated actor. He's great. He's, Psych was such yeah, a great show. I loved Psych. That and Monk. 
Yeah. 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 Great. They're probably the same writers. They I don't, don't make they don't make them like that anymore. They don't. Truly don't. All right. Let's dive right into our stories here, guys. Um, Ed Sheeran. He's uh, he's popping up a couple of times tonight. Uh, but uh, Luke Bryan said a few days ago that there will be two artists who'd be filling in for Lionel Richie and Katy Perry on American Idol while they're performing at the King Charles's coronation ceremony this weekend. And he said they're big time and he wasn't kidding. That's right. Ed Sheeran and Alanis Morissette will be filling wow. in for Lionel and Katie during Sunday night's installment of the show. While Ed will be a guest judge, Alanis will both judge and mentor the remaining contestants. We'll be singing her songs live. Could you imagine She's singing? Got so many great songs. Could you imagine having in a com- in a singing competition singing songs to the person who made them gigantic? And having them judge you for it. And having no them pressure. judge you. No, no pressure, pressure on these all. kids. Yeah. Well, uh, Katie and Lionel are living the royal life there. Uh, the contestants will also team up to sing duets of Ed's songs. So double whammy there. Both Ed and Alanis will also perform themselves. Alanis will sing one of her hits while Ed will perform a new single from his album Subtract, which drops on Friday. Meanwhile, Katie and Lionel will be checking in with the show live from Windsor Castle. Very posh. Where the coronation concert is taking place, the show airs live coast to coast Sunday, May seventh at eight Eastern, and five percent uh, percent five p.m. <laughs> Pacific on ABC. <laughs> uh, don't miss it. Oh, look, another photo of Edward. As promised, you guys. There are some places in the United States where you can buy a house for as little as thirty-six grand. Where? I I don't know. Uh, maybe the desert. Maybe the- somewhere where no one wants to live. Yes. Ed Sheeran has decided to pay that amount of money every month. How fun for an apartment in Brooklyn, New York. Thirty six grand. Thirty six thousand dollar. Yep. According to the Wall Street Journal, Ed has signed a lease on an apartment at Pier House, a new one hundred unit condo development in Brooklyn Bridge Park where stars such as Matt Damon and Amy Schumer own homes and is renting the four-bedroom, 3,200-square-foot apartment for $36,000 a month. That's almost $1,000. No, wait. That's more than $1,000 a day. Hmm. That's um, how much? How much? Th- that's twelve. Th- that's $1,200 How much day. is that per square foot? 3,200. 36,000 divided by 3,200. 100? 100 and some change? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You're throwing numbers at me? I can't. What is it? <laughs> Hang on. I got I got the calculator. 36,000 divided by 32. I just want to know, for every square foot he walks in that house, how much money he's dropping a month on that joint. Uh, $36,000 per month. Uh, okay, 3,200 square feet? Yes, sir. So... For every square foot, he's paying eleven dollars and twenty five cents. Oh, that doesn't seem so bad. Eleven dollars a foot. I mean, I don't know, but in my opinion, the the more staggering thing is that it's more than a thousand dollars a day. I just want to point out that thirty two hundred square feet is um, it's about a thousand. It's over a thousand more square feet than my house that we're sitting in. Yeah, that's a lot of space. And we have a broadcast studio in our house. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, he's paying more a month than most people make in like a year. <laughs> he's paying what we pay a, a, in rent a month um, or for, for the whole year. Yeah. Right around uh, 36 grand per month, which is the most expensive rental expensive rental property in Brooklyn. When it first came on the market earlier this year, the apartment. But the which, kid's worth like billions. Yeah. Trillions, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. The apartment, which uh, last sold for $6 million back in 2018, has a private rooftop terrace, an outdoor dining area, and grill. Oh, cute. Uh, it's not clear when Ed plans to stay in the apartment since he's about to kick off a North American tour in support of his new album, Subtract. But, uh, it's also not clear if he's been staying there while he's been uh, in New York to testify at his thinking out loud, let's get it on copyright trial. So 
Could you imagine paying $36,000 a month for an apartment you don't even live at? No. <laughs> like, why? Why would you sign a lease somewhere? But let me give it a shot. <laughs> I will be happy to take that experiment and, uh, and, and get back to you. Doesn't he have like a wife and child now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like two children? He's got he's got churin. I don't know what's going on with him. I hope he doesn't lose that. Uh, lose That's that why child. he's got a spare apartment. <laughs> Thirty six grand a month, Lord. And we just resigned. There's no price on freedom. <laughs> we just resigned our lease and um, and uh, had a heart attack. Not anywhere near that. Ten percent of what he's paying. <laughs> oh, all right. Post Malone in the news. <gasps> what? What was that name? Yes, Post Malone. We, 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 you know we all love our Maloneisms here. <laughs> let's let's not postpone this uh, segment any longer. Segment any longer. Let's... Yeah, well, uh, everybody post up and listen to this story. Post Malone post is a, <laughs> he's, uh, setting the record straight on his recent weight lost. Lost? Loss. Lost. Just, just one. Um... His post diet. No, I'm just kidding. In an Instagram post Friday, the rapper wrote, I um, wanted to say that I'm not doing drugs. I've had a lot of people ask me about my weight loss, and I'd suppose uh, performance on stage. I'm having a lot of fun performing and have never been or never felt healthier. Went on to say that becoming a dad is what kickstarted his healthier lifestyle. He's cut out soda and started eating better. Post ads. He's looking to cut smokes and brews next. <gasps> what has he become? <laughs> People seem to forget that, like, guys, if they just move more and stop drinking soda, they immediately lose, like, 15 pounds. Yeah, yeah. But why would you ever do any of that? Right. Post concludes. There's a wedding in a month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try to fit into that suit. Post concludes his message by telling his fans he's been working on new music and that he's the happiest he's been in a very long time. Went on to uh, say, if you're having a hard time or need some love, I can say that you're loved more than you know. And keep fucking crushing it. He said, good night, nerds. Spread love and rock on. Post he's a gem. Yes. And that was the end of his post. I saw that on Instagram too when he <laughs> when he posted it. <laughs> All right. On to our What are we gonna do in the post Aerosmith era? I was live Malone. That was two in one for you. Listen, you guys. I live Malone. This next story, sad for some. Aerosmith is uh, heading into retirement. Finally, Again? Jesus Christ! Yes. Again, and uh, and they're doing it with a farewell tour. Oh, of course. The group announced <laughs> on Monday one. that they'll have a forty-date North American tour featuring special guests, the Black Crows. Hmm. They're dope. I think it'll yeah, be a great are. show. Uh, Aerosmith said in a joint statement, "It's not goodbye. It's peace out." Oh God! I've seen them in concert one time, and they put on quite a show. Aerosmith? Yeah. Like I can imagine. swinging out over top of the crowd and yeah. Yeah, I I heard there was one show at, at Coral Sky or whatever the fuck it's called now. <laughs> um where they unveiled a little a little stage platform out in the in the grass mm -hmm. and uh Joe Perry and Steven Tyler were out there. <laughs> they did a little set. Yeah, like in the was, middle of their show out in in the grass. I think everybody killed each other trying to get up there. But <laughs> yeah, that was a story I heard. Uh, they also went on to say, get ready and walk this way. You're going to get the best show of our lives. Yeah, you tried it. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't hit <laughs> those chokes. notes anymore. <laughs> the, uh, new I wore tour. the wrong pants. <laughs> <laughs> the new tour will uh, be produced by Live Nation and will kick off in Philadelphia on September 2nd with stops across the U.S. and Canada, including the Kia Forum in Los Angeles, New York's Madison Square Garden, Austin's Moody Center, Seattle's Climate Pledge Arena, 
Chicago's United Center. How do you know you live in in, in 2023? The Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle. Uh, Chicago's United Center. Toronto's Scotiabank Arena. And more before wrapping in Montreal, Quebec at uh, the Bell Center on January 26th. There will also be a stop in Boston for a special hometown show on New Year's Eve. No more details about that. Tickets for general sale will be available this Friday, 10 a.m. local time on Ticketmaster.com. Hope it doesn't crash. <laughs> right. Hope you all get some tickets. And we got some sad news to end out here. But it's important. You guys... The man, the myth, the legend. Jerry. Jerry, Jerry Springer. Jerry. <laughs> the father of daytime trash television and the former mayor of Cincinnati. Uh, that's right. Jerry Springer, longtime television host whose tabloid talk show was known for outrageous arguments, thrown chairs and physical confrontations between sparring couples and home wreckers, died last Friday after a brief battle with pancreatic cancer. Family spokesperson said Thursday Springer was 79 years old. There were so many people that were posting RIPs for for Jerry this week. And uh, one that stood out to me is a a friend of the shows who uh, referred to him as their grandfather. (laughs) And all of the people that sent their regards to her for losing her grandfather. Oh, wow. oh, no. Oh, no. I was like, oh, my gosh. They all thought her granddad was Jerry Springer. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, I feel that in my childhood. Um, oh, yeah. I, he I, was there on every day I skipped school. Every day I be fake sick. being sick. <laughs> I was yep. watching Jerry Springer like three weeks ago. Uh, there was nothing else to watch, and I was Reruns. on like Roku TV, and I was oh. just like, "Oh, sure." <laughs> Wild. He had the Judge Jerry show too. He did. He did. That was his deal. Judge. Wow. Mm-mm. Nothing like being judged by Jerry Springer. Well, I'll sail on Jerry Springer, seventy nine. That's Steve pretty. Will- it's pretty good run. Yeah. Steve Wilkos is still holding the torch, though. Yeah, his show is pretty terrible, but I like him. I like when he yells at people. Next on our death list, um, uh, Canadian music icon Gordon Lightfoot. <gasps> no. He's passed away at the age of 84. He made it a little bit longer than Jerry. The wreck oh of God. the Edmund Fitzgerald artist died at a hospital in Toronto. How old is he in that picture? 84 years old. Jesus I think this was like Lord. the day before he died. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, he he, uh, he got a little crypt keeper at yeah. the end. Yeah. Um, that that song wreck of the Ed Fitzgerald. Boy, don't even talk to me about that. I'll, I have a story. I'll tell you at the end of this article. Oh, I've got a story about it too. Uh, he died on the afternoon of May first. That official death statement was posted on the late artist's Facebook page because that's how we announce our deaths these days. Don't forget when you die to set up your uh, your Facebook to let everybody know that yeah. you're dead, uh, detailing an exact time and cause of death. Uh, it's with profound sadness that we confirm that Gordon Meredith Lightfoot has passed away. Gordon died peacefully on Monday, May 1st, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. Exactly. At Sunnybrook Hospital in Toronto. He died of natural causes. He was 84 years old. He survived by his wife, Kim, six children, as well as several grandchildren. There are too many to count. A number is I mean, not when practical. you have six kids. Um. So I, uh, most of you know, I, I played music on cruise ships, and uh, I know you too now. But um, the funniest request I would get from people is to play "Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald," which is a song about a sinking ship on a ship in the middle of the ocean. And I would, uh, <laughs> I would delight in declining that request because I was like, I'm superstitious, and uh, I'm not going to sing a song about a uh, sinking boat. He declines every time I ask for it to, for him to play it too. I have played it. I know it, but uh, yeah, not 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 today, Satan. <laughs> what about what's your story? Your Gordon Lightfoot story, Derek? The fact that I ask you to play it every time I go to one of your shows and you re- you refuse. Oh yeah, for sure. Ceylon because it's what a nine minute long song. Oh, it's very long. 
I definitely have to like bust out lyrics for it because I don't I don't remember it. Canadian legend and treasure. He had a great voice. Yeah, he was beautiful and he had great songs. Way better songs than The Wreck. Wreck, my God. Sundown comes to mind. Um, he's had some other good ones too. Carefree Highway. I could go on, but I won't. Now that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the Jordy Files. Thank you. Great job, Jordy. Thank you. Thank you, Jordy. Braddy. Oh, Jordan. Oh, oh, oh. Cricket, cricket. Oh, no. Not here. All right, you guys. Ellie, do you want to do. Do you want to do Bible study or midweek motivation? Do you have a midweek motivation plan? I always do. I'd like to hear yours. No. <laughs> That's cute. You haven't talked enough tonight. That's. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little bit of. Uh... The best thing is when you do your motivation and then she responds to it. The back and forth is great. Okay. This one's uh mm-hmm. this one's a doozy. No. Oh. Yes. All right. Well, get your pen and paper and prepare yourselves for this week's midweek motivation. <laughs> motivation. All right. Rum, we have the dumpster. For centuries, humans have been fascinated by the paranormal. We've told stories about ghosts, spirits, and other supernatural beings for as long as we've been able to communicate. But what if there's more to these stories than just entertainment? What if the paranormal is all around us? We're just not seeing it. I believe that the paranormal is real, Mm -hmm. that it could be a powerful force for good in our lives. When we embrace the paranormal, we open ourselves up to a whole new world of possibilities. We can connect with our loved ones who have passed on. We can learn about our own past lives. We can even gain access to hidden knowledge and wisdom. Of course, there are also dangers associated with the paranormal. And if we're not careful, we can attract negative entities or energies into our lives. But if we're respectful and cautious, the paranormal can be a great source of joy and enlightenment. Now, how can we embrace the paranormal in our everyday lives? Well, here are just a few tips. Be open-minded. The first step to embracing the paranormal is to be open to the possibility that it actually exists. Don't dismiss stories about ghosts or spirits just because you can't explain them. Keep an open mind and be willing to consider the possibility that there's more to the world than what we can see. Do your research. A lot of information available about the paranormal. Read books, watch documentaries, and talk to people who have had paranormal experiences, Derek. The more you learn, the more you'll be able to understand and appreciate the paranormal. Get involved in the paranormal community. Not in the dead way, but uh, in the (laughs) paranormal investigation uh, community. There are many groups and organizations that are dedicated to the study and exploration of the paranormal. These groups can provide you with support, resources, and opportunities to learn more about the paranormal. And last and certainly not least, be respectful. When you're interacting with the paranormal, it's important to be respectful. Remember that these entities are just as real as you and me, and they deserve to be treated with respect. So embrace the paranormal and open yourself up to a whole new world of possibilities. You might just be surprised at what you find. Thank you. I do have another paranormal story if you want to get into it. It's very in-depth and might take a little bit 
but just so you know. Well, Derek, we're here. We're here for you. I'm we're being here. open-minded. I am doing my research, getting involved, and being respectful. Please so tell your story. You, they're, they're, multi, they're different facets of the paranormal activity, beliefs. And, um, I guess you could, when you talk, come across supernatural things, you can um, start thinking of guardian angels. Sure. So um, probably my most prominent supernatural paranormal experience was getting hit by a car and not breaking a bone, not dying, not um, being able to walk away from it three days later. Um, I got hit pretty pretty hard. It was a pretty nasty accident. I was on a, on a bike and uh, got hit, went through a windshield. My bike went under the car. I got thrown out of the windshield. My body landed. From what I was told, I got up, started walking to make sure the people in the car were okay. Sounds like something derrick <laughs> And then I laid down, like just laid myself down, and the rest is history. Um, I wholeheartedly believe that I had a guardian angel that day that protected me, and that guardian angel is who got me up and started walking to make sure these people were okay. It, it wasn't me. It was this guardian angel who laid me down. Um, there's no reason other than a supernatural entity for me to be sitting here today. I, I believe that wholeheartedly that to see photographs of you, Derek, um, and maybe on another, on another show, we'll, we'll get into that whole thing. Cause I think that's a show where the, that whole experience uh, but to get photographs of you, I was out in the ocean. Um, I was in port and, and was catching up on emails and whatever. Uh, but to see photos of you at, immediately after that accident was just heartbreaking. And all of the things that had to work out for me to be sitting here today and for my family to have been alerted, everything supports a supernatural entity being involved in waking me up and saying get your stuff together yeah and uh because it happened right across the street from where my mother works she was alerted to it just because of a phone number on a building um i mean none of my stuff could have been used i wasn't awake and I was fully awake other than my heart stopping a couple of times, but I was fully awake most of the time. I just wasn't conscious. Sure. sure. I remember nothing. Probably for the better. For the better. Yeah. I mean. Um, I remember waking up to a doctor saying that if I were to regain consciousness, I'd be a vegetable. Oh, God. They need to, they need to watch their damn mouth. <laughs> And, I have no and idea I, who's listening. I, yeah, I was listening, and I said, well, that sucks because I hate vegetables. <laughs> um, I remember that story very so clearly. That is my most prominent and actually most recent paranormal experience is the thought of guardian angels and a higher power, dare I say, God, on YouTube protecting. No, no, we've been, we've been decommissioned. <laughs> no, seriously, man. I, 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 uh, the story that comes to mind for me is uh, when the, the, the containers crashed on the crane crashed into that building in, in the Netherlands yeah. and uh, just had the wherewithal to get out of the way. And the, these huge plate windows came crashing down on the dock. It was um, on the skyscraper. It was crazy. I, I mean, I, I it, it's amazing that no one was around except for my friend Janice and I, mm -hmm. and we were able to take shelter. We just happened to be in this little archway that we could go into uh, before it all crashed down. Yep, something out there keeping it all keeping it all in motion so that I could be here and run my mouth on this show today with all of you. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? <laughs> all right. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, look, we, we, we got a, uh, on Twitch, uh, somebody commented, we got a comment from Twitch. Hi, I want to offer promotion of your channel. Viewers, followers, <laughs> fuse, chatbots with the prices lower than any competitor. Thank you so much. Wow. Dogehype.com. Thank you for, for commenting. I'm sure that works in our favor with the algorithm. Anyway. <laughs> All right, you guys. We're going we're gonna to jump right into our shameless plug. I feel like the Kool Aid Man. I'm ready for I'm ready for Ale House. That's what's going on. I'm ready for Miller's. You know what I think you're ready for? No, 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 no. baby, Derek. No, I think you're ready. I'm not ready. (laughs) I'm not ready. Ellie, do you think he's ready? Yeah, I think he's ready. I, I've got two more. We can all do it together. I'm not. You absolutely have to, it not. has to be a secret. You can't just throw it around. Oh, it was a secret. I told you earlier it wasn't going to happen, and I did it anyways. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> That's not a secret. <laughs> it's a secret if I had it planned all the time. I do have to say that rum punch was really was really nice. It really, really was. It was pretty I, smooth. I, I, I enjoyed it. still have like all of mine. That's trash. Uh-huh. 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 Okay. Do I get to keep this? I can take this home with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not the straw. The straw was expensive. <laughs> These are gifts, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to go around the room and do our shameless plugs right quick. Uh, anybody want to start? I'll start. All right. Uh, so... Friday is Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. (laughs) I will be at my store for an incredibly long time. Uh, We are open until midnight on Cinco de Mayo. So if you're looking for a late night uh, taco run, we will be open until midnight at Tijuana Flats in St. Lucie West. Um, I will be there all night. Um, but it'll be fun. We have like uh, I think we're doing some games and some giveaways and stuff. Nice. Um, but yeah, you always have. Be- you guys always have a fun time. It's gonna be a good time. Literally, everyone that I have working for me is going to be working that day. Um, but it's like Thanksgiving at at every other restaurant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Um, but no, it should be a good time. We always try to make it fun. It is going to be super busy. Um, so if you are going out as a patron on, uh, Cinco de Mayo and you go to a place that predominantly sells tacos and they are busy, be patient, be patient, be kind. We're doing the best we can. We're only human. Um, so just be good people to the people that are handling your food, preferably. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Do that every day, but. Definitely do that every day, but definitely do it on the busy, you know, days like Cinco de Mayo. Hundred percent understanding. Have an open mind to that as well. Absolutely. Don't be a demon. Anything else? No, that's it. That's all that's going on in my life. Yeah, nice. Cinco de Mayo at uh, Tacos Tijuana Flats. Yeah. What about you, Derek? Uh, I don't have any uh, shameless plugs, but with Cinco de Mayo coming up, may the fourth be with you. Ah, yes. That's one of my plugs also. <laughs> yes. I, I, I love stealing your plugs, brother. That's that's weird. It's weird yeah, to you, say. You're not supposed to share them. It's weird to say. <laughs> I clean them first. Oh, I God. clean it up a little bit. A lot of it. Well, that's why they're so clean when they're returned. Yes, sir. Um, Listen, you guys, thanks so much for tuning in live with us tonight on YouTube, Facebook, and Shore Life Radio. Please, again, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share it with all your friends. And uh, like, follow, and share us on social media. Also, be sure to check out our official website, jnclive.tv, loaded with all kinds of fun content. Now you can order JNC swag right from there, koozies and hot sauces and shirts and all kinds of fun stuff. You can also check out our sponsorship opportunities as well. If you like to give us money for nothing, mm-hmm. and checks for free. Uh, shout out to our sponsors and partners at Code Rum, Hop Life Brewing, the Sneaky Tiki in downtown Stewart. 
the Drums and Rums podcast presented by our good friend Paul Robertson. He drops podcasts on Tuesday and hosts uh, his live streams on Thursday traditionally, which means tomorrow he's doing May the 4th Be With You. <laughs> yep, Love he's, you, Paul. Uh, he's doing his Star Wars. It's his turn to do a Star Wars episode. So he'll be doing his um, his at uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow night. And I think I'm actually going to set up a, a rerun of our podcast or of our uh, our Star Wars episode to run uh, just before Paul. So to get you all pumped up for Paul's <laughs> live stream. That's great. Uh, so, yeah, so that'll be set up. I'll, I'll put out a little invite uh, for you guys to check out that uh, that rerun. It was a great episode. It really was. Uh, Ellie, you missed it. Oh, yeah. Ellie was needed to be the one there. She's got tattoos. She's got Star Wars tattoos. Prove it. I have one Star Wars tattoo. Hold. Hold, please. There it is. Yes. The yin yang, the good and evil. It's wonderful. <laughs> the muscles. <laughs> the, mu- the muscles. You're shredded. <laughs> have you been eating your post cereals? <laughs> oh, God. My yep. shredded wheats. Yes. Normally, you're yelling at us for taking it too far. I know. <laughs> uh, so check out uh, check out the Drums and Rums podcast uh, wherever you listen to podcasts or at drumsandrums.com. And uh, it'll be a good time tomorrow for Star yeah. Wars. We love it. Bro, you are full of Maloney. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, now I'm thinking too hard. The Bug Juice, <laughs> the Bug Repellent and Skin Care Products, Chesser Custom Designs, Laser Etching and Engraving, Learn to Live Aboard.com, a wonderful blog about living aboard a sailboat. Academy of MidFlorida.com. You can earn your MBA completely online. You can be a big fat slob in your computer chair and become a business person. <laughs> For all your graphic design needs, check out BradBrockDesign.com. The guy's not very good looking, but he's really good at what he does. Uh, also, check out our radio partners at ShoreLifeRadio.com and Nixus Radio. And of course, if you dig what we do, uh, we encourage you to become a patron. Uh, and help support the show, you can visit patreon.com, P A T R E O N, slash JNC Podcast to become a patron for five bucks a month. Get a first look at exclusive content. Tonight, you'll probably see me uh, smash a Smirnoff uh, over on there. Uh, and some behind the scenes footage and more. I'll be performing my one man band show tomorrow night at Manatee Island in Fort Pierce. But you can find my full schedule at bradbrock.com. And uh, this is a big one. If you support education and particularly trade schools uh, and you love live music, please consider helping our friends at the El Camino School of Music in Orlando. I support El Camino. Yes, I support El Camino. The uh, GoFundMe link will be posted in the forever upload of this episode uh, and every episode until they're they're back afloat. Uh, So please give if you can and share either way. Uh, And... uh, be sure to check out the El Camino School of Music. Uh, you can Google that and find out more info on the school. Our season finale will be on May 17th. It's coming up. We've got two more shows. Isn't that so sad? Two more shows. Uh, I know. And uh, we'll be joined on the 17th with the Victoria Lee Trio. So we'll have Victoria Lee, Shanice Gransom from The Little Things, and Jeff Farashidian from Treasure Coast Entertainment. All here, and uh, so we'll have some. We'll have a live band. We're gonna have some champagne and some cake, and uh, maybe, just maybe, somebody, somebody's gonna get shocked. <gasps> what? Yeah, I know, Derek. I know you love it. So <laughs> we'll get you sorted out. We haven't um, done much of that. Day. I know, I know. Uh, so we're gonna take a break for about four weeks because uh, I'm getting married. <laughs> I'm getting married, so we got to focus on that a little bit, and uh, then we'll be back. It's coming up quick. We'll, we'll be bro. back in just enough time to celebrate Ellie's birthday. Yay! <laughs> we are uh, we're trying to put together something really I mean we we put we put Jordan in the dunk tank for her birthday and we blew confetti up all over Derek. <laughs> so we got to come up we have to level it up even more. Yes. For you. So, yes. Any ideas that you guys might have out there, please let us know. Otherwise, I'm get um, a t-shirt gun and fill it with whipped cream. That sounds like a mess. <laughs> Let's not do that. No ants. <laughs> yeah, for we'll God's sake. Outside still. For God's sake, we've done really well this year without ants. Uh, so that's that. And uh, of course, like I said, we'll be back in the middle of June uh, for for that. So thank you so much. This has been our shameless plug. 
All right. Well, that leads us up to uh, the. Oh, you opened it. You didn't even save it. Derek's, <laughs> Derek's iced himself. I've got two more. You're champion at this. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, listen, I hope you all enjoyed the show this week. Uh, learning a little bit more about the paranormal and some of the uh, paranormal sites around uh, Port St. Lucie and uh, in the Treasure Coast at large. Um, go check them out. We got a lot of cool history. There are ghost tours that roll around our cities here. Uh, so sign up for one and, uh, and embrace the paranormal, baby. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in live. And if you're not tuning in live, join us for a live show on Wednesday, uh, uh, Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern. For the next two Wednesdays, anyway, and then we're going to take a little <laughs> break. It's not going to matter, but uh, we'll have some reruns going, so it'll be just like you never missed us. I'll just have a shorter beard. Um, and you can saw, you can catch us on YouTube and Facebook and uh, Twitch, or you can listen live on Shore Life Radio. I will be streaming to even more places in the very near future. Give it up once again for the JNC Destruction Crew. <laughs> Look at the camera, you knucklehead. There you go. <laughs> yes. Oh, we make it too easy on ourselves. <laughs> oh, and uh, and Jordan. Oh. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, Jordan will be back next week, uh, but we uh, wish her safe travels home uh, tomorrow. Thank God. I don't know what, I'm, what to do without her when she's not here. Everything stays so clean and tidy. I have <laughs> nothing to do with myself. Next week on the show, we're joined by Mitch Fine and the Kevin McLaughlin to talk about their amazing Almond Brothers tribute. Uh, brothers, after all. So don't miss that. It's going to be a great time. And uh, until then, keep your spirits up <laughs> and your demons down. Take care of yourselves and each other. Broadcasting live from the legendary JNC Lounge. I'm Brad Brock. We love you. Good night. Oh, oh, oh.